Vulkan has a lot of moving parts. You know, it uses React, uh, Redux, GraphQL, Apollo, Meteor, so many libraries, so many buzzwords, and it might be hard at first to understand exactly what they each do. So today, let's talk about GraphQL and Apollo. What are they? What do they do? Why do we need them in Vulkan? So GraphQL um, is, as it says here, a query language for your API. What this means, in essence, is that GraphQL is a way for a client, a browser, a mobile app, uh, anything like that, to query a server to get data in return. You know, so um, as it says here, ask for what you want. I'm asking for a project whose name is GraphQL, and I want to get the tagline property back. And that's what I get, the project tagline, a query language for APIs. So at its core, GraphQL is just a, a syntax for uh, querying data. And the reason it's useful is for you know, a couple of reasons, but mainly because it lets you specify exactly what you want, ask for what you want. So let, let's uh, take a practical example. Here's a, a Vulkan app running the form example. And here's a graphical, which is a tool that comes uh, built in with uh, Vulkan and, and a lot of other uh, GraphQL apps and lets you query your GraphQL uh, endpoint. So here on the left, you have the GraphQL query. So I'm declaring a new query named posts. I say I'm going to hit the post list uh, query resolver, which is kind of a, an endpoint name. Uh, I'll pass an empty terms object as parameter, and then I specify the query properties I want in return. And on the right, you see the result. I have one, two, three, four, five results. And then, you know, I can do limit two, and I'll get two results. And I, I can uh, specify a view, uh, view new. Oh, yeah, that's wrong. Anyway, you know, I can, um, I can change the parameters of my query using a GraphQL syntax. So that's what GraphQL is. It's not a library, it's not a framework, it's not anything like that, it's just a syntax. Now, since it's just a syntax, the question is, well, how do I use that syntax? And that's where Apollo comes in. So this is the Apollo homepage. Apollo itself is a company, or rather it's a, a product of a company named MVG, which stands for Media Development Group. And uh, Apollo has a bunch of stuff. It has some open source tools and it has uh, optics, which is performance monitoring as a service. But what we're interested in is the, uh, the open source tools. And there's two sides to, to that. There's the client tools and the server tools. So for, first, uh, this is the, um, the Apollo dev developer side, as you can see, it's kind of geared more towards the, the client side of things. That's the aspect they're pushing, but uh, they also do have a server. So uh, we'll start with the server, actually. And uh, yeah, so the server has two parts, uh, GraphQL tools and GraphQL server. Uh, GraphQL server is a production ready Node.js GraphQL server library that supports Express, Connect, and so on and uh, serves your GraphQL endpoint. And uh, it's available on GitHub. Um, and then GraphQL tools, you know, these are just uh, additional tools to help you build your schema, your resolvers, and so on. But the main point to understand is that uh, server and tools together, they create the server side part of the equation. They create the, the endpoint and they make uh, basically they make that data available to the world. Now, the second question is how do you use that data, right? Because here uh, you can see we are receiving this data inside graphical, but of course you want to receive it inside your app and then you want to do things with it. You want to, you know, send it to your React components. You want to keep it updated. You want to maybe uh, update it when something changes on the client. And that's where uh, the client side of Apollo comes in. And Apollo client also has two parts. 
First, there's a Apollo client proper, which will query the GraphQL endpoint, load the data inside a, a Redux store. And then depending on your uh, library, your front end library, you might use uh, React Apollo or um, Angular Apollo, Vue Apollo. You have different connector packages to send that data to your components. So to recap, when you have a Vulkan app, so your data is stored in a database. That database um, you know, is connected to a server. The server powered by Apollo server creates a GraphQL endpoint. And, and then since that endpoint is available, the GraphQL client powered by Apollo client can use the GraphQL syntax to query the endpoint and then in turn load that data on the client, pass it on to your components uh, through a connector package. Now, all that being said, of course, Vulkan's goal is to simplify things and make all this easier for you. So most of the time, you won't really have to worry about um, GraphQL server, uh, Apollo client, all these moving parts. But still, it's good to know how things work behind the scenes. So hopefully this video will have been uh, useful, at least for that. Thanks for watching.